Warhammer 40,000, 9th edition, core book. The Imperium. Untold millennia have passed since humanity took their first tentative steps into the dark void of space. Stellar empires have risen in glory and fallen in ruin, but always mankind has endured. Now it faces its most desperate war for survival against an endless onslaught of horrors bent upon the absolute destruction of the human race. Mankind is beset. The shadow of damnation spreads across the stars. The waning years of the 41st millennium are an age of constant war in which history, reason, and hope are ground to dust beneath the inexorable weight of the passing years. Enlightenment is replaced by superstition, understanding by rhetoric, rote, and uncomprehending prayer. All that remains is war. For all this, the Imperium is the single largest and most powerful empire in the entirety of human history. A million worlds are said to labour beneath the Imperium's yoke, and at their heart lies holy terror and the divine god-emperor, interred forever within his golden throne. This vast domain is envisioned by its rulers as a solid, unified whole, its star systems divided into segmentums and sectors, its populace united by bonds of species and by the overarching imperial faith. The High Lords of Terror, the Ecclesiarchy, and the Adeptus Administratum issue edicts of rule in the Emperor's name. Countless mighty armies and potent battle fleets answer that call. So is the domination of humanity wrought upon the heavens themselves, so works the Emperor's divine will. The reality is rather different. The Imperium is in constant flux, worlds vanishing amidst howling warp storms or annihilated by invading terrors, even as new territories are claimed by rogue traders and explorator fleets. Imperial crusades surge across the stars, driving back their enemies, or vanishing in the bloody maelstrom of war. The Imperium is best pictured as many thousands of tiny candles, scattered far and wide through a dark and hungry void. Some burn bright, or burst into vibrant life, even as others flicker, waver, and are snuffed out. Each Imperial world is the fiefdom of its planetary governor, permitted to rule however they see fit so long as their tithes continued to be delivered on time. Many are despots, tyrants, or inbred incompetence. Even the worthy rulers find themselves separated from the next human world by distances measured in light years, forever beset by invaders from within and without. In such conditions, even the most equitable of rulers' needs must become an oppressor if they hope to keep their people alive. Interstellar travel and system-to-system -system communication in the Imperium are entirely dependent upon the strange dimension of boundless energy known as the Warp. Yet, though mankind has exploited the energies of the Warp to spread across the stars, it is from this hellish realm that the greatest threats to the Imperium have emerged. Malevolent entities flow from within its dark currents to drive loyal souls to heresy and madness, or to manifest as monstrous beasts that ravage the worlds of real space. Everywhere the warp touches, insanity and boundless mutation follow, and the twisted worshippers of the dark gods of chaos are rarely far behind. Nor are these the only threats faced by mankind. Countless alien species teem through the darkness between the stars. 
They ravage humanity's far-flung domains, even as they feed their rapacious appetites, or expand the boundaries of their own Xenos empires. Still, the warriors of the Imperium continue to fight on, beyond all rational hope of victory. Theirs is not a war for honour, freedom, or the promise of a better tomorrow. It is a battle for survival, a tooth and nail fight to see the next day dawn, a defiant scream into the hungry void that humanity will never ever give in. There is no room for hope in this nightmarish future, no time for compassion or mercy. There is only war. The Warp The Warp is a dimension of pure energy and limitless potential that lurks beneath the skin of real space. Known also as the Empyrean, the Immaterium, the Sea of Souls, and by many other ominous titles, it is both deliverance and damnation in one. The Warp is a place where every thought, dream, emotion, ambition, and fear of the galaxy's sentient races coalesces and finds physical manifestation. Its true form would drive even the most formidable mortal mind to madness. Thus, it is most often envisioned as an endless ocean of roiling power whose kaleidoscopic currents are ever in motion. By piercing the veil separating reality from warp space, humanity tapped into that endless ocean. By plunging into the currents of the warp, spacecraft could cross incredible interstellar distances in a fraction of the time they would have otherwise taken. Humanity's psychic potential was unlocked in the focusing and unleashing of warp energies, allowing mutants known as psychers to reshape reality and facilitating astropathic communication from one world to the next. Without the warp, the the Imperium could neither function nor exist. It was humanity's gateway into the stars. Yet, the Immaterium is as perilous as it is powerful. Like any great ocean, the Sea of Souls knows ferocious tempests and violent storms that can devour unwary craft or spill into reality to ravage entire systems with plagues of rampant mutation and nightmarish phenomena. Worse, the warp is inhabited by uncounted legions of malevolent entities. Known to humanity as demons, these predatory entities circle like sharks around psychic minds, whispering their temptations and seeking to devour the souls of the unworthy. War Zone Cadia The fortress world of Cadia stood for thousands of years as the foremost bastion against the dark servants of Chaos. It formed the linchpin of a belt of militarized star systems known as the Cadian Gate. Abaddon the Despoiler shattered Cadia as punishment for its obstinate resistance, and now the broken world has become a chaos stronghold at the heart of a burgeoning renegade empire. Yet worlds throughout the Cadian Gate remain loyal to the Emperor. The defenders still fight to hold back the worshippers of the Dark Gods, and continue to offer prayers for salvation that may never come. Warzone Nakmund The Nakmund Gauntlet is one of only two known stable passages through the Great Rift. This renders it strategically vital to the Emperor's realm, for the route forms a tenuous conduit between its sundered halves. Imperial worlds lay at both mouths of the channel, Sangua Terra in the Imperium Sanctus and Vigilus in the Imperium Nihilus. Both planets and their surrounding systems are under ferocious attack by the worshippers of the Dark Gods, while marauding Xenos forces strike at both factions with equal savagery. Meanwhile, Chaos Knights from the tainted world of Daravar, which lies in the Gauntlet's throat, 
march out to lend their monstrous might to the ongoing wars. Warzone Baal Baal is the homeworld of the Blood Angels, one of the most ancient and noble of all the Adeptus Astartes chapters, lying at the heart of a savagely beautiful region of space known as the Red Scar. It is also firmly on the wrong side of the Great Rift. Worse, Baal and its surrounding systems are embroiled in an ongoing war for survival against a vast tendril of the Tyranid Hive Fleets. Nor is this their only peril, for the demons of the Chaos God Khorne have struck at Baal once already, and will doubtless do so again. The Blood Angels and their successor chapters lead a ragged alliance of Imperial armies to drive back the enemy on every front, yet their fight is a desperate one. War Zone Ultramar Located in the galactic southeast, Ultramar is arguably the Imperium's greatest and most magnificent bastion. It is the stellar empire of the Ultramarines chapter, ruled justly by them and defended by their battle brothers, their successor chapters and vast forces of the Astra Militarum and Imperial Navy. Still, in this dark age, it is beset. Led by the diseased Death Guard, the forces of the heretic Astartes tear at Ultramar's defences and seed entropy and horror across its worlds. Orc war bands crash like bloody waves against its borders, pushing deeper into Imperial space every day, while the Tyranid menace haunts Ultramar's eastern borders, stretching its armies even further. Warzone Pariah once prosperous and productive, the area of space now known as Warzone Pariah was reduced to haunted decay by the eldritch artifice of the Necrons. Imperial forces responding to the region's sudden silence found planet after planet where cities and manufactorums lay abandoned as nature reclaimed them. Necron war engines and ghoulish android warriors stalked through the ruins, unleashing terrible weapons upon the shocked Imperial armies, who fought back with a mixture of fury and horror. Conflict rages through the region still, fought beneath an oppressive shroud of anti-psychic energies that threaten with every passing moment to steal the very souls of the Emperor's warriors. The Imperium Sanctus Though certain that the opening of the Great Rift was the work of foul heretics, few in the Imperium know the truth of how or why this catastrophic chain of warp storms erupted across the galaxy. It is clear only that the Imperium is split apart, torn in two by a roiling belt of malevolent empiric energy that has left the Emperor's realm divided as never before. The vast galactic region known as the Imperium Sanctus is the half of humanity's realm that fared better in the wake of the Great Rift's opening. Of course, in this time of nightmares, better is a comparative term, consisting of the segmentums Pacificus, Tempestus, and Solar, and parts of both Obscurus and Ultima, the Imperium Sanctus has holy terror at its heart. From here flows the psychic light of the Astronomicon, a magnificent golden beacon that shines through the madness of warp space to act as a guide for spaceships navigating that perilous realm. The Astronomicon's light is generated upon terror by a vast choir of psychers, then focused and beamed forth by the Emperor himself. Hundreds of psychers die in agony each day as the effort burns out their minds. Such monstrous attrition is seen as a small price to pay to provide a guide by which humanity can navigate the galaxy. 
It is thanks to the light of the Astronomicon that, despite the opening of the Great Rift having whipped warp space into a hellish frenzy and left countless Imperial worlds beset, the Imperium Sanctus continues to function. Throughout this immense region of the galaxy, Imperial worlds of every sort raise their tithes of military manpower and vital resources, sending them forth to bolster the armies of the Astra Militarum and feed the never-ending hunger of humanity's stellar empire. Space Marine strike forces surge from one war zone to the next, battling the deadliest threats to the Emperor's realm, while vast Imperial Navy battle fleets engage in blistering void wars against invasion swarms of every sort. Crusades of Battle Sisters bear the word of the Ecclesiarchy into the fiery heart of battle, purging heretics against the Imperial faith wherever they are found. Countless Imperial agents work the Emperor's will, overtly or secretly, throughout the Imperium Sanctus, while upon Mars and her countless subsidiary forge worlds, the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus hoard the arcane secrets of the Omnissiah. They use this dimly understood law to fashion the technologies and weapons humanity's armies require to battle their foes. This is not to say that the Imperium Sanctus is a well-oiled machine. Only astropathic communication can bridge the vast distances between Imperial worlds, passing from one straining, warp-sensitive mind to another through the treacherous dimension of the Immaterium. This process of psychic messaging is heavy with symbolism, vagary, and inaccuracy. Worse still is the very monolithic bureaucracy by which the Imperium Sanctus is governed, Mindless and uncaring, glacially slow, the machineries of administration grind all into dust. Millennia of historical learning are lost amidst dusty catacombs, sealed away behind barriers of religious censure. Response times to crises can often be measured in years, decades, even centuries. To this vast bureaucratic machine, the fates of entire worlds barely register, while individual lives mean less than nothing. The living beings of the Imperium are but grist for its ever-turning mill, a resource no different to the Prometheum that fuels its engines, the iron and adamantine that armors its warriors and war engines, and the protein gruel that feeds its armies in the field. Most of the men and women who populate this sprawling empire are born, live their lives of toil and fear, and eventually die from hardship, malnutrition, exhaustion, or some barely remarked upon industrial accident without ever having seen an alien, a heretic, nor even a warrior of humanity's armies, crushed down by the oppressive dictatorial rule of imperial law, and comforted in whatever desperate fashion by the imperial faith, every one of them has served their part in mankind's galactic war, just as does a bullet fired from a gun, or a blade driven into an enemy's guts. Truly, only those who take to the stars to war or conquer in the Emperor's name stand any chance of seeing more existence than this, and even then, much of what they witness is invariably horrific. For all its nihilistic misery and soulless oppression, the Imperium Sanctus continues to grind onwards, its sheer weight and momentum carrying it forwards through tragedies unnumbered and hardships untold. This is humanity's every effort turned wholesale to sustaining total war, all the while praying to the Emperor that one day this nightmare may finally end. To Sail the Sea of Souls Warp travel is the only way for humanity to remain a spacefaring race. Yet, it is no simple matter. Even a single warp jump involves perils beyond imagination, 
and a long voyage across the Imperium may require dozens of such jumps. Even to pierce the veil requires warp drives, dark marvels of arcane engineering that tear back the skin of reality and allow a ship to plunge into the Immaterium or to claw its way back out. Once immersed in the warp, a ship is reliant upon its Geller field to keep it safe. Strange machineries as steeped in the supernatural as in science, these devices enfold the ship in a localized bubble of reality. A vessel in the warp burns like a beacon to the predatory entities of that terrible realm. The souls of its passengers are an irresistible draw to them. Should a ship's Geller field flicker or fail, then the craft will surely drown in a tide of nightmares, the souls of all on board forfeit. Even should a spacecraft avoid these perils, it will only reach its destination through the efforts of its navigator. Strange mutants, whose third eyes can read the tides and currents of the warp, these beings guide human vessels through the Empyrean, praying always to emerge again, alive, sane, and untainted. The Imperium Nihilus Vast tracts of Imperial space lie beyond the roiling warp storms that make up the Great Rift. Cut off from all but the most determined aid, blind to the Astronomicon's light, and beset on all sides by legions of nightmarish foes, the worlds of the Imperium Nihilus must look to their own survival by whatever horrific means necessary. The region of space known as the Imperium Nihilus is cut off from Terra's light by the warp storms of the Great Rift. Not only is the light of the Ostr Astronomicon obscured by these raging tempests, but there are also only two comparatively stable channels through which Imperial fleets are able to cross the storm front. Even these shuddering gauntlets are haunted by empiric phantasms and piratical wolf packs, but they are at least safer than the narrow passages that open only sporadically between the storm belts, only to sweep shut like a monster's jaws upon those brave or desperate enough to dare crossing. Thus severed from the rest of the Emperor's realm, each world in the Imperium Nihilus must stand alone amidst the darkness. Many fell during the first nightmarish days of the Noctus Aeterna, when shockwaves of psychic upheaval lashed the galaxy in the wake of the rift's opening. Planets and their populations were annihilated, or twisted beyond recognition, as warp storms engulfed them. Hordes of demons spilled from rents in the fabric of reality to butcher and torment all before them. Heretical cults arose, prophesying the end of all things, and whipping formerly loyal citizens into a murderous frenzy. Rampant mutation ran rife, Abominations were spawned from the darkest nightmares of men's minds, and entire populations turned on one another in self-destructive storms of violence and cannibalism. Other Imperial worlds held out. Fortresses rallied their garrisons, readied their weapons, and drove back attackers from within and without. Hardy agri-worlders formed defensive militias, vanishing into the wilds and fighting guerrilla wars against alien invaders. Industrial worlds drafted every man, woman, and child to churn out endless streams of material, hurling wave upon wave of conscripted soldiery into the teeth of terrors from beyond the stars. Even still, for many worlds, death might have been a kinder fate. The Immaterium roils and churns, rendering warp travel catastrophically perilous. Forced to wrestle with spiteful empiric tides, wildly erratic destination flux, and dramatic temporal distortion, Imperial ships can risk only the shortest warp jumps, meaning that not only travel through the Imperium Nihilus terrifyingly dangerous, 
but it must also proceed at a virtual crawl. Interplanetary communication, too, has been almost entirely stifled. Forcing a message across the Imperium Nihilus requires Herculean and often fatal effort, and even those missives that do make it to their intended recipients arrive in the form of recurring nightmares. Many worlds are wholly isolated, more than one population believing themselves the only surviving bastion of human civilization in the galaxy. Many planetary governors, military commanders, and religious leaders have been forced to make terrible choices and commit monstrous deeds in order to keep the lights of civilization burning upon the worlds they rule. Plagues of mutation, madness, and supernatural disease blossom, while landscapes warp and change beneath baleful skies. Malefic entities manifest seemingly at will to prey upon the unwary, while simple despair stalks every human soul. And always the great rift blazons itself across the firmament, corrupting all that its noxious light touches. Though the human territories within the Imperium Nihilus are crippled, the same is not true of their enemies. Some Xenos races possess alternate methods, be they technological, biological, or seemingly sorcerous, by which they can traverse the stars while bypassing the warp altogether, Others revel in the madness that has been unleashed, joyriding the currents of empiric madness wherever fate wills, and falling in howling tides upon whatever worlds lie in their path. That which blights imperial worlds, fleets, and armies serves only to aid the worshippers of the dark gods. Even as it churns in madness, the warp sweeps these heretics and traitors along on favourable tides, more often than not bearing them to their destination swiftly, if not safely. Surges of immaterial energies allow renegade psychers to enact unspeakable rituals that drag entire worlds into damnation, or translocate them into the hellish heart of the warp. Ancient and terrible beings, not seen abroad in millennia, feed off the raw energies of unbridled chaos, gathering the strength to force their way through the veil and fall upon humanity with howls of glee. Everywhere, hope fails. Still, the loyalist worlds of the Imperial Nihilus fight on, shoring up their faltering hope with unbridled hate. For every system swallowed by the darkness, a crusade blazes a trail across the stars to relieve the desperate defense of another. Space marine chapter planets, inquisitorial fortresses, and adepta soriatus preceptories shine as bright beacons of defiance amidst the shadows. Night worlds light their watchfires and weather the storm, just as they did during the dread millennia of the old night. Meanwhile, daring rogue traders, dogged Adeptus Mechanicus Explorator fleets, and the courageous Imperial Navy flotillas brave the tumult of the Immaterium to bring hope to lost worlds or claim new colonies for mankind. Perhaps the end of the galaxy draws nigh. Perhaps the darkness of the Imperium Nihilus will spread like a funereal shroud over all humanity's endeavours. However, while faith continues to burn strong, the defenders of the Imperium will not give in. The Great Rift The destruction of Cadia and its ancient pylons, the sundering of craftworld Biel Tan, the breaking of the Amethyl Demon Cage, Magnus's vengeance on Fenris, these and dozens of others, other pivotal e- events fractured the stuff of reality as the 41st millennium raced towards its bloody conclusion. Any or all might have been the final blow that broke the fault lines wide and unleashed the great rift upon the galaxy, 
known also as the cicatrix maledictum to the Imperium, Gork's Grin to the Orcs, and Dathedian to the Aldiri, Aldari, and countless other names weighted with dread and mythological symbolism, it has changed the face of the war for the galaxy. Upon its opening, the rift unleashed a tsunami of ferocious empiric energy and supernatural darkness, known to the Imperium as the Noctus Eterna, and this alone claimed countless worlds, fleets, and armies. Though that shadow has receded, still the rift roils and spreads, devouring entire races with its unnatural fury. The Emperor of Mankind To the vast majority of humanity, the Emperor is a god. He is the divine presence who sits the golden throne of terror. He is guider, ruler, the higher power to which they offer their prayers for aid and deliverance. He is depicted and worshipped in myriad forms by souls beyond counting. Most would be driven mad with despair if they knew the truth. Ten thousand years have passed since the Emperor arose on holy terror. It was he that united the warring remnants of humanity and led them to reclaim their lost stellar empire. Records of that glorious age are gone, ground to dust by the weight of passing aeons, or lost amidst deeply buried and rune-sealed vaults that none now can open. What remains is allegory, myth, and religious scripture that tells of a great crusade to drive back the darkness of old night and replace it with the golden light of the Imperium. The Emperor's gene sons, the demigods known as Primarchs, led his armies to, to reconquest. Before them, no foe could stand. Eternal glory beckoned. Then came heresy. Then came the arch-traitor, Horus, the Emperor's fallen son. Horus made war upon his father's realm, leading fully half his mighty brothers into damnation alongside him, and in doing so served the will of the dark and terrible Chaos Gods. Tales tell of a devastating war that swept the stars, World after world burned as the Imperium tore at itself in maddened fury, and the angels of the Emperor battled the demons of chaos for possession of humanity's soul. At the last, the Arch-Traitor fell by the Emperor's hand, but not before he had crushed and rent his sire's body with his wicked talons. Legend tells that the Emperor ascended to his golden throne that day. His physical form was broken, sustained only by the device's arcane machineries. Yet his soul and his almighty psychic mind remained as powerful as ever. So began the Emperor's endless vigil over the human race, Though he could no longer walk abroad with his blazing sword and lead his armies to battle, still the Emperor shepherded and protected his people. Enshrined in countless ecclesiarchical sermons, illuminated texts, magnificent frescoes, and immense stained armor-glass windows across the galaxy, that teaching remains central to the imperial faith, that the Emperor shields mankind from harm, battling the demons of the warp in the spaces beyond reality. So long as his servants remain faithful to him, the Emperor protects. In truth, the Emperor is a carrion lord, his body long withered and decayed, the arcane machineries of the Golden Throne encase his physical remains entire and preserve them using stasis fields and psi fusion reactors, but of the godlike being he once was, only his supreme will remains. The Emperor cannot communicate with those who serve him, 
cannot issue commands or make his desires known. His rule is far more metaphysical in nature, for it is by his will that the dark terrors of chaos are prevented from overrunning humanity wholesale. Even as his mummified corpse writhes in eternal purgatory upon the golden throne, so his potent spirit still bestrides the warp, and does battle with the endless tides of malefic beings that would otherwise burst forth to tear his people apart. The Emperor has given all he has so his Imperium might endure. Though it has diverged greatly from the realm of strength and civilization that he envisioned, endure it does. The Emperor's throne room is arguably the most heavily protected location in the entire Imperium. Ensconced at the very heart of the Imperial Palace on Terra, it is watched over by the golden armoured giants of the Adeptus Custodes, magnificent warriors whose bodies resonate with the incredible energies of genetic alchemy, and whose entire existence is devoted to protecting the Emperor's physical personage and enacting his divine will. The palace itself is an immense fortress, its bastions built atop the throne world's greatest mountain range, its buttressed fortifications and enormous gun emplacements fit to see off armadas that could despoil entire star systems. The void around Terra throngs with fleets, vast orbital defense platforms and void-born minefields. Yet for all this, the Emperor is still imperiled. From the stars come invasion fleets beyond number, heretics, aliens, and foul demons, all hurling themselves against the defenses of the Sol system in the hopes of breaking through to Terra itself. Worse still, though the finest magi of the machine god throng around the golden throne in never-ending communion, must, uh, much of their ancient lore has been lost. There are none left in the Imperium, capable of maintaining the throne's arcane systems, and now whispers hint darkly that they may be failing. Since his internment, the Emperor has had to consume the souls of hundreds of psychers a day to sustain his existence, but it is said that his appetite for life force is becoming insatiable. If so, humanity is surely doomed, for if the Emperor dies, then his subjects will soon follow him into the abyss. Rule of the Imperium With the Emperor an inscrutable deific presence, the rule of his immense realm falls to the High Lords of Terror, known also as the Senatorum Imperialis. This conclave of supreme autocrats issues edicts in the Emperor's name, striving to maintain control of an ever more dystopian Imperium, with its all-consuming labyrinthine bureaucracy and its fractally complex war zones. The Imperium is so vast, so thinly spread across nigh unimaginable cosmic distances, that by its very nature it defies centralized rule. It can take months, sometimes years, for a report, a distress call, or a cry for help to carry across the interstellar gulfs to terror. Often the deployment of a response takes even longer, thanks in no small part to the fickle and anarchic nature of warp travel. In practice, great swaths of the Imperium, especially the more remote or hard-to-reach systems, must look to their own governors and soldiery for protection. It can be easy for those who dwell upon such isolated worlds to feel as though the wider Imperium is distant and holds little claim to their planet. However, just because the Emperor's realm is so vast as to be all but ungovernable, this does not mean its cyclopean bureaucratic machineries do not aggressively continue to try. 
It is a foolish governor who considers themselves beyond the emperor's gaze. Should a world dare diverge from the rigid status quo, it will be brutally repressed, punished, and beaten back into line. Such measures are vital to the survival of the Imperium, for the Emperor's realm is beset on all sides. Examples must be made of every if every world is to toil as it must for the galactic war effort, and to be kept free of the slightest chance of insurrection, heresy, or worse. The High Lords themselves always number twelve. Nine titles upon their council are considered virtually sacrosanct, positions such as the Master of the Administratum, the Paternoval Envoy of the Navis Nobilitae, and the Fabricator General of the Adeptus Mechanicus being always preeminent. Other positions vary, drawn from among the rarefied circles of Terra's great and good. It is their duty to attempt to interpret the Emperor's will, and hope that his potent mind guides the choices that they make, choices that routinely decide the fates of billions. Beneath the aegis of the High Lords lies the Adeptus Terror, the colossal bureaucratic engine of imperial governance that is itself broken down into myriad organizations. The largest of these is the Adeptus Administratum, which is comprised of many thousands of subdivisions. To its vast military wing, the Departamento Muninitorum, falls the duty of marshalling, supplying, and deploying the immense might of the Imperial War Machine. It is the task of the wider administratum, meanwhile, to organize, administer, tithe, and archive the Imperium. A task so Sisyphean that the administrative backlog is centuries in arrears. The cogs of the administratum grind ever onwards, however, burning through thousands of exhausted or insane acolytes every day. It is enough that the task is performed, and understanding is neither required nor welcomed. There are many other organs of the Adeptus Terra the Navis Nobilitae, and its illustrious houses of sanctioned mutant navigators, the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, whose black ships prowl the Imperium in search of potential psychers, and whose Scholastica Psychana assesses and trains them, or else condemns them to be fed to the Emperor's golden throne, the Adeptus Astronomica, who train the psychers that will take their places generating the Astronomicon to guide Imperial ships in the warp, the Adeptus Arbites, whose judges and arbitrators enforce the word of Imperial law across the Emperor's realm, the Officio Assassinorum, which takes the most truly exceptional from amongst the human herd and transforms them into monstrous and highly specialized killing machines. The list goes on and on. Many autonomous and semi-autonomous bodies help to rule the Imperium through dogma and military might. The Adeptus Ministorum, Adeptus Mechanicus, Adeptus Astartes, Astra Militarum, Questor Imperialis, and others provide the strength of arms to enforce the High Lord's will. The Navis Imperialis sends fleets of warships out into the void, following the trails blazed by the rapacious rogue traders of the Adeptus Astra Cartographica, while the agents of the Inquisition move through the shadows and fight hidden wars in the Emperor's name. Despite the combined efforts of these and other mighty bodies, only a small percentage of distress calls can be answered, and only a fraction of threats met with appropriate force. It is the Imperium's own weight and ponderous momentum that carries it ever forwards through millennia of disaster and cruelty, more than the actions of any one group. <laughs>